Hey everyone, it's Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a design system in Affinity Designer. If you don't know what a design system is, it is basically a library of reusable assets with a set of guidelines that can be combined together to create any number of uh, apps or product designs. There are many benefits of having a design system, such as establishing brand consistency and working efficiently. That way it will help you or your client save time and money in the long term. So with that being said, let's jump right in. All right, let's open up a new file. You may use any template that you like, but in this video, I'm going to just use the iPhone X device as a template. Now that we have an artboard opened up, let's make some duplicates of this artboard. Make sure the artboard layer is highlighted and hold down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC and left click and drag. Now let's do this until we have a total of five artboards. The reason why I'm using five artboards in this video is because I'm going to use five of the most commonly designed system categories and they are color, typography, buttons, icons, and logo. There are more categories that you can add later on uh, such as illustrations, forms, checkboxes, and modals for example. Um, but again, in this video, we'll just cover the common, commonly used categories. What I'm doing now is just renaming the artboards with the category names. That way, we know what to put in there. Okay, let's start off with our first artboard, which is the color artboard. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to start off by creating a square shape using the rectangle tool. Then I'm going to go over to the color palette on the drop down menu. Let's choose colors. And now we have a library of colors to choose from. With the shape selected, I'm going to choose a magenta color. Okay, um, now we're going to copy the color hex code of this shape by double clicking the current color selector and copy the hex code which is already highlighted. Now let's go over to the type tool and we're going to add the hex color code underneath the magenta square. The reason why we would add a hex color under it is because let's say if we accidentally changed the color or we totally forgot what the color was, the hex key is our backup of what the original color was. Um, also, it's for convenience. Say if you're collaborating with a developer who wants to know what the hex color code is, they'll be able to read it off the design system. All right, so let's move on and let's create another color. I am going to duplicate the shape and the hex code by holding down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC and left click and drag to the right. Now let's select the duplicate shape and change its color to cyan. Now let's double click the color selector for the cyan and let's copy the hex color code and paste it into the duplicated text. Last but not least, our last color will be just plain black. Um, we'll be using the black color just for our text and that hex code is just six zeros. And that completes our color category for our design system. Now that we have a set of colors for our color artboard, let's move on to the typography artboard. Now, it's pretty standard that many designers and organizations have at least 
two or three typefaces that they use consistently to establish their persona or branding. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to keep things simple and ch choose two typefaces. With our text tool selected, let's change the first font to something like a sans serif, something like Av Avenir is, as our header font. And let's designate the header one at 30 point like this. Then go ahead and add a subheader or header two at 24 point. Now that we have our first typeface completed, let's select a second typeface. And this time, let's go with a serif type, such as, let's scroll through this real quick, Palatino. Now let's go ahead and designate the first body header at 18 points. The and then let's add a secondary header at 14 points in italics. And last but not least, the last of the body is the body text, which will be the at um, 14 points, but regular. Um, Oh wait, there's one more text that we should establish, which are the text on the buttons. So let's go back with the Avenir font in medium, and let's make it at 18 points. And now our typography system is completed. All right, now let's move on to creating some buttons. First, with our rec rounded rectangle tool selected, uh, we're gonna create one button, and then the first button will be filled with the magenta color. Next, we are going to add text to our button using the text tool. And we're gonna call this button the primary button. Using the typography system we have just created, we're going to change the font size and styling accordingly. Now let's create a secondary button by duplicating the first one. Then we're going to flip the colors around and add a stroke to the button like so. Next we're going to change the text color to magenta and change it to the secondary button. Finally, we're going to add a third color by duplicating the primary button again. And this time, we're going to make this button cyan and rename it to tertiary button. And now our button system is completed. Okay, now let's bring up our iOS icons that we can use by going to the view studio and assets and the asset library will appear and let's scroll down to the icon sub menu and from here you can drag and drop the icons to the artboard now if I selected all of the icon I can go ahead and change all the colors to one from my color system uh, if there isn't any icon you don't see, you could always create your own icon, like, for example, a balloon pin, by going to the Shape tool and so selecting the teardrop. Let's flip it vertically. Let's create a circle and use the geometry function tool and let's subtract it from the balloon pin and there you have it another common icon you can create is the setting icon which is usually um, like shaped like a gear or in this case affinity designer calls it a cog 
cog shape and the number of teeth of the gear and let's go with something like eight yep that looks good and and you can adjust the inner circle now we have our icon set now let's close out our asset library so that we have more screen space all right finally we reached our last artboard which is the logo uh, let's go ahead and create a simple logo uh, for this video i've already had a design in my mind uh, which is a bear logo so i'm going to design a bear logo using the colors that we have already in our color system and i'm going to speed up this portion of the video because you can check out my other videos on how to create a logo. Now that we have three variations of our logo, let's say if you want to add a logo filled with a color outside of your color system. For example, if there is a holiday coming up like Valentine's Day, if you change the, the logo's color to red, just make sure that you add the color and hex code in the color system as well. Well, that completes our tutorial on how to create a design system in Affinity Designer. As mentioned earlier in this video, you can add more to the design system, such as illustrations, forms, spacing guides, or any guides that would make the design process and branding consistent. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Let me know in the comment section below what you all think or what kind of tutorials that you look forward to seeing in the next videos. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe to check out what other creative projects or tutorials I will be working on next. On that note, I'll see you next time.